In this problem, we told, we're told we have a variable mesh screen, it's located right here, that produces a linear and axisymmetric velocity profile downstream of the flow as shown in this figure. So the flow comes in uniformly here in this, this uh, circular channel, radius of R, comes in with velocity V1, the pressure here is P1, and then it goes through the screen and it changes the velocity profile so that it's linear but axisymmetric, meaning it, you could rotate it around this center line here. Um, and the pressure there is now P2 at section 2. And we're asked to find the, um, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the force the mesh screen exerts on the fluid. So the screen will uh, exert some force on the fluid that's flowing through it. And we're told to assume that the pipe wall does not exert any force on the fluid as well. So this will be a linear momentum problem. And the reason I know that is because I'm trying to find a force. Force shows up in the linear momentum equation. And physically what's happening is we have some linear momentum coming in. That linear momentum has changed as it goes out. So some force must have acted on it. That force is the force exerted by the mesh screen on the, on the fluid. So we're going to apply linear momentum here. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to apply it to a control volume. So let's draw a control volume. I'll choose one that cuts across the incoming stream right there, and then it'll go cut across the outgoing stream as well. And it'll go along the walls of the pipe. And then I'm going to have it sort of weave in and out. This will be hard for me to draw, but it's weaving in and out of the mesh so that the mesh is exerting a force on the fluid. So I'll just draw that force that the mesh exerts on the fluid. I'll draw it to the left here and just uh, put it as F. And let's put a coordinate system on here as well. I'll just, I'll just fix a coordinate this way called X. So that, um, that force F is the force that the mesh, the mesh screen is exerted, exerting on the fluid as it flows through here. So the control volume is actually just kind of weaving in and out of the mesh such that the mesh is touching the control volume. All right, so let's write out the linear momentum equation in the x direction. The x direction because that's the direction the force is acting in, and that's what I'm trying to find. We're going to write out the full linear momentum equation. It's always a good idea to start with the basic equation first, and then we'll simplify it. Okay, so there's our linear momentum equation in the x direction. Notice that we're using a fixed coordinate system, so it's inertial, so I don't have to worry about any acceleration terms in our linear momentum equation. All right, now we'll evaluate each of the terms um, one at a time. So let's start here, this is the time rate of change of x linear momentum within the control volume. This is going to be zero in this problem because we're assuming that it's a steady flow. That, that the flow through this pipe channel uh, doesn't change with time, so the time derivative will be zero. Okay, it's always a good idea when you set something equal to zero, indicate why it's zero. So that's why I put the parentheses steady. Let's have the Body force in the x direction, that one's pretty straightforward. That's going to be zero. We're not told anything about gravity in this problem. And uh, my first guess would be that gravity does not point in the x direction. So I'm just going to set the body force in the x direction to zero. That's an assumption that, that gravity is not pointing in that direction. Let's do the surface forces in the x direction. Of course, we have the surface, the, the force that the mesh screen exerts on the fluid. So we'll put that one in there. So that's a a minus F because it's acting in the minus X direction. And then the only other force, surface forces that we have in the X direction are the pressure forces. We have P1 acting on this left surface and it'll be acting in the positive X direction, pushing inward. So this will be a positive P1 times the area pi R squared. Then we also have the pressure force on the right face and that'll be acting in the minus X direction. So it'll be a minus P2 pi R squared. It's a minus because it's acting inward on the surface here. Right? If I draw my normal vector for the area, I'll just draw it there. There's my N hat. The pressure force, of course, is acting in the opposite direction to that. So 
that's why we have a minus on the P2 force. All right, so then the last bit that we need to write out is the momentum flux in the x direction. So let's start on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, the velocity ux over here is just v1. So that's this term. I'll highlight it in yellow. So there's my v1. It's a positive. It's in the positive x direction, so it's a positive number. Then we'll do the mass flow rate term there. So we have a density. The relative velocity is just uh, the velocity of the fluid, which is v1 in the i hat direction, minus the velocity of the control surface. Well, the control surface is fixed, so it, it's it's not moving. So my relative velocity will just be v1 i hat. And then we have the dot product with the area there. The area there is just going to be the magnitude is going to be pi r squared because it has a radius of r. And its normal vector is pointing in the minus x direction. Here's the normal vector. Remember that these outward pointing normal vectors are pointing out of the control line, so that's why it's pointing to the left. So the area there is going to be a minus pi r squared i hat. So this term that I've just evaluated in the square brackets is my mass flow rate term. And I don't have to do an integral over here on the left-hand side because the velocity is uniform and the orientation of the, of the area is also uniform. So I don't need to do any integration. On the right-hand side, however, we will have to do an integral. And the reason for that is because the velocity is changing with respect to position. So we actually have to do an, an integration on this. So let's set, the, set that up. So on the right-hand side, we have the x velocity, but it's it's changing. So we need to find an area over which the velocity doesn't change very much. And that area, since, since the velocity is um, a function of radius, if I stay at a constant radius, the velocity will stay constant as well. So if I look at the pipe end on, and, oh, I, and if I go out to some radius, over this little area that I'm sketching out here, it's just a little annulus. It's, a, it's an area that is very, very thin. The, the thickness of this annulus is dr. It's differentially thick. Over that area, the velocity remains constant because it's at the same radius. Um, so we just need to write out what the velocity is as a function of radius, and then we'll use that as our as our velocity ux here, and then the urel is also. The area of that little annulus, dA, let me write that out, that's going to be the circumference, 2 pi r, times the thickness, dr. And to make that a vector, it's going to be pointing in the, po the, 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 the n hat vector is pointing in the positive x direction. So we'll just make that a vector. Okay. Remember, we're only doing this for the right-hand side, so the normal vector is just in the positive x direction there. So now we need to write out what the velocity is before we can go much further. So if I look at this, I have this kind of profile. Let me call the velocity at the top here. Let's call it v max, so that the velocity as a function of radius will be v max times little r over capital R. That's this velocity profile. How I came up with that was I knew that it, I know that this is linear and the maximum velocity is v max and it's zero there. So when r is zero, v should be zero. When r is capital R, I should get v max. So that, and, and this is equation of a line. So that's how I arrived at that. How to get Vmax, we'll figure out in a moment. Let, let me worry about that later. So using that velocity, we'll plug that back in down here. So the ux is just that x velocity you know, on that area. So this will just be Vmax r over capital R. That is my yellow ux term right here. 
because it's the velocity in the x direction at some given radius. Now we'll do the mass flow rate term. That'll be the density times the relative velocity. Well, again, the control surface is fixed, so this will just be the same as the fluid velocity. So it'll still be a V max, little r over capital R in the i hat direction. And then we'll dot product that with the area, dA, which we wrote down before. It's just the area of that little annulus. So that'll be 2 pi r dr in the i hat direction. And then we're going to integrate this as r goes from 0 out to capital R. You can see it's the dr here that's varying. So we're just, we're just adding up over all these little rings as we go from the center out to the edge. So r goes from 0 to capital R. And when you do this dot product, this is just going to be rho v max little r over capital R times 2 pi r dr, because the two i, I hats just uh, dot product with one another and give you a value of 1. Now, we still need to figure out what v max is. And to find that, we'll apply conservation of mass to the same control volume. And the reason I, I say that is because I know that whatever mass flow rate comes in here at the inlet, it's going to be the same mass flow rate going out through here. Uh, if we're assuming it's a steady flow, there's no accumulation of mass on the inside here. So whatever comes in from the left has to go out through the right. So if we apply conservation of mass to that same control volume, we can relate V1 and V max. So let's write a conservation of mass. So there's conservation of mass. First term is the time rate of change of mass in the control volume. That's going to be zero because it's a steady flow. Here's the mass flow rate in from the left and out through the right. So we've already evaluated these actually. Here's the mass flow rate coming in from the left. Remember this u uh, rho u rel dot da, it's the same thing here. So this is the mass flow rate coming in on the left-hand side. So I'll just write, rewrite that here. That's a minus rho v1 pi r squared. And then going out from the right-hand side is this term that we just evaluated. I, I should have highlighted that in green just to emphasize that's the mass flow rate term right here. So this will be a rho. Well, I have to make sure I integrate that because it's varying. So this will be a rho v max little r over capital R 2 pi r dr. So then you can see that uh, from conservation of mass, we can re relate uh, v1 and v max. So densities will cancel out. There'll be a pi that cancels out. And when you simplify all this, if I go, go through the math of this, what you'll get is v max is equal to 3 halves v1. I won't do the integral here. It's a pretty straightforward integral, but if you work it all out, this is what you'll get. And then you can take this, of course, and substitute it in up in there and evaluate this integral. So I'm not going to do the integrals uh, just for the sake of time here. It's, it's calculus. The, the integrals aren't that tough. You should be able to do them. But if you then take this Vmax, substitute it in here, and about you know simplify everything here what you'll get when all is said and done is that the force oops the force that the mesh exerts on the flow is this it's going to be minus pi over 8 rho v1 squared r squared plus p1 minus p2 times pi r squared believe I've done all that correctly. Assuming all the math is correct, that's what it comes out to be. Just double checking my numbers here. Yeah. So, um, so that's what it should come out to be if I did all my math correctly.
So just to recap what we did here is we recognized that this was a linear momentum problem to, to find the force that the, um, the mesh exerts on the fluid. We know that um, we know that uh, that's a linear momentum problem because it involves force and we see that the linear momentum of the fluid changes. So we apply the linear momentum equation to a control volume that surrounds uh, kind of the inlet and the outlet and then weaves in and out of the, the mesh. The inlet is all nice and uniform, so that's pretty straightforward. The outlet, since the velocity is changing, we have to actually integrate. And when we integrate, we chose little areas over which the orientation of the area and the, in particular, the velocity remain constant over that area. So, so we can find the mass flow rate over this little ring. That's what this term is right here. That's a little bit of mass flow rate. So we found the mass flow rate over that ring and then added up the mass flow rate times the velocity over all the rings. So that's what the integration is. And then since we didn't know what V max was, Remember, V max just comes from the geometry of the outgoing uh, velocity field. Since we didn't know V max, we used conservation of mass to relate V max to V1, and then substituted it all in and, and did the math. So the hard part, I think, in this problem is really just getting the velocity profile at the outlet, recognizing that it's linear, and then using conservation of mass to relate it to the incoming velocity. Uh, the other thing that might be a little tricky would be the pressure forces. It's pretty easy to forget those, but you have to keep in mind that that's a surface force acting on the sides of the control volume. So that might be another place that would trip someone up is just forgetting those. And then of course there's always the math part where you have to do integrals and dot products and such, so you have to be careful with that. All right, we'll go ahead and end the example there.